Going off the beaten path a little bit, SHOT Show 2012 with Tactical Doodle, nothing fancy. Emerson Knives, talking to the man himself, Ernest Emerson. How you guys doing? Thanks We're for making time for us. Yes, indeed, anytime for that, because uh, this is what the SHOT Show is all about. We've gotten to the point where it's more about friends than it is about selling knives, and Amen. that just makes everything a lot more fun. Exactly. Okay, Ernest, we talked off camera. I reviewed your CQC-8 in 2008. It's one of my all-time favorite combat tactical knives. Fast, it's solid, build quality, just amazing. This is your chance to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I may peep up here and there and say, uh, you know, I love that model because these are some of my favorite Emerson models. Take it away, boss. Well, we grabbed a, we grabbed a bunch of nice ones out of the uh, display case, but I got to say, uh, you like the CQC-8, you obviously know what you're talking about because that, that's a knife that I've been making uh, strictly for combat uh, since the mid 80s and it actually was a knife I made for uh, a bunch of the lads from the SAS and uh, it's been all over the world and so you, you obviously picked a good knife for that. So I've been carrying it for years. I love it. It's a go-to tactical blade for me. It, it is and it's got it's got all the features that I want in a tactical knife or a combat knife for that matter too. So. But anyway, yeah, we've got a bunch of good stuff here, and uh, you know what? Let's talk about these commanders for a moment because okay. uh, we got the long and the short of things right here. And uh, the commander knife uh, is a knife that uh, actually was the first one that ever had our wave feature on it, and we developed that when I was working with uh, some special units out of Coronado uh, for the Navy, and uh, it's become kind of a signature thing for all of our knives. In fact, everything we do now basically has a wave feature on it and, and strictly every contract or every military purchase or every police purchase that we get, they, they want that wave feature on there. So, you know, that's that's been a big thing for us. We're real, real happy with it. Uh, this is, is the uh, Uber Commander, which is an uh, interesting little story. Uh, one of my buddies over in Afghanistan uh, sent me something one day and what it was was an old uh, MRE package torn in half and it said, postage free, delivered to Emerson, it had our name and address on it. I opened it up and there was a drawing in there of a commander and he'd drawn about a quarter of an inch larger all the way around the outside of the commander and it said, I dare you to build this knife. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm up for dares every time. So we made the, we made the knife, I thought it was gonna be too big, but when we finished up the first one we did, I put it in my hand and I said, holy smokes, it's not that big, even though it's a large, large knife. Uh, some knives just lend themselves well, getting a little bit bigger, and some knives don't, but the Commander did. Now, conversely, we make a knife now called the, the Micro Commander. So, the Commander design, and again, when I talk about designs, some knives, if you make them too small, they do not fit. The, the, the curves and the points and the edges are all in the wrong place. But this, this handle design, and I, I'm, believe me, I'm not the, the genius about all this stuff, but sometimes you hit it, you hit it right. The commander blade, uh, or excuse me, commander handle is good small and it's good large. And there's not a lot of knife designs that can go to those extremes and still be a functional, you know, decent sized knife that's comfortable in your hand. That's a good looking blade. Thank you. It's it's one of our flagship knives, and it's it's one of our most popular. Ernest, ones. could you talk to? Uh, you go with chisel grinds on most of the blades, right? Uh, yeah, except uh, I want to be want to be real clear, and this is a good opportunity to talk yeah, about talk that. Yeah, talk about it. Uh, for example, if you look at a CQC7, which is completely flat on one side, main bevels on the other side, that's what we would call a chisel grind, meaning that it's only ground on one side. Now a lot of guys, and this is a great opportunity because I get this question all the time. Uh, I've got this knife here, just got it in my, uh, I'm a customer, I just bought the knife, I looked at it and it's, it's not sharpened on the back side, somebody forgot to sharpen both sides of the edge. Well, heard it all before. Yes, and I heard it. I still hear it, and, yeah. and that's that's nothing more than someone not being quite familiar with our knives. So again, I got I got you, you got me, and we'll talk about that. We have chisel ground knives that the main bevels are ground on one side only, and then the edge is ground on one side only. We also have knives that we would call V grind, which are ground on both sides with the main bevel, but all Emerson knives edge grinds are one side only. 
And the edge grind is not the chisel grind. The edge grind is strictly the edge grind. So when we talk about chisel, we're talking about main bevels. The edge, like I said, is ground on one side only. As you can see on all the knives, we've got an edge on one side, flat on the other side. That allows us and you, the customer, to be able to, in the field, scrape that knife against a piece of brick or a piece of pipe or a stone and actually put a serviceable edge on it. No, you're not gonna shave with it, but I'll tell you what, people that are in the field or in uh, an environment, they don't have the uh, option of carrying sharpening devices with them and all that. They basically have their gear and only the gear they need when they're in an environment like that. If you've ever humped ruck anywhere, you know that a couple ounces can make a big difference after 10, 12 hours in the field. You know that's right. So we wanted to do something that allowed somebody to literally scrape it on some blacktop if they had to and put a serviceable edge on it. Not Like I said, it'll still cut rope and all that. You can do the fine sharpening when you get back to base or get back home, hopefully. So anyway, that's, that's the story about the Emerson edges versus the Emerson chisel grind. Well said, like it, I'm all in. And you know what, let's talk about this knife for a moment. It's, this is the A100. I like that knife. And way, way back, now I can say way, way back because we've been in the game for a little while, uh, the first knife that I built that I considered to be a tactical knife was this model right here. And uh, it didn't enter into our factory line for about 20 years actually. But uh, a couple of years back, I looked at the design and said, you know, a good design's a good design. It, it doesn't matter if it was designed yesterday or 100 years ago. Amen, brother. And uh, so I brought it back, and it's actually been one of our more popular knives. And, and one of the reasons that I like it is it, I like clean lines. Uh, I, I've got a 67 Camaro. The reason I like 67 Camaros, they have clean lines. There's no chrome on them. It's the same thing with the knives. For me, less is more, and I think the best designs in, in, in art and in cars and uh, at knives is uh, just putting on the bare minimum that makes the design work and then leaving it alone. Because again, you're always tempted to say, oh, we could put this on there, we could change it a little bit. But I learned a long time ago, and again, talking about cars, cars were better when there was one guy designing the car. Now you've got 200 guys designing a car, yep. and they look terrible. So again, that's my baseline philosophy about design and about the knives. There, there is a point where they're done, and uh, anything else you're gonna put in it, you can ruin the recipe by putting too many spices in, a, in the stew, and that's, that's the way I feel about it. Well said. Wow. Uh, Gypsy Jack. Every once in a while we go a little crazy. Uh, I, I design a lot of stuff that's strictly tactical, but you know, you gotta have fun uh, and do stuff just because you want to sometimes. Uh, a couple years ago, I made some knives for Keith Richards. And I hope you all uh, know who Keith Richards is. He's the, he's the lead guitarist for the Rolling Stones, one of my heroes in the, in the music world. Uh, and uh, he has a knife that he carried uh, that's uh, is similar to this handle style, but it's uh, a knife that's uh, actually from South Africa, and it's got a ring on top. And uh, it's a folding knife, and he's carried one of those for years and years. And uh, we started talking about knives, and I made a couple different models for him that were pretty and fancy and all that. And then uh, we were talking about making a knife that uh, would kind of replace the, the knife that he carries. And uh, we came up with an idea called the Gypsy Jack. And uh, I'll be honest with you, Keith still carries the, the, the original, original one that he <laughs> likes so the best. Funny. He's attached to it. <laughs> and I understand that 100%. But uh, we had a lot of fun with this knife and actually introduced it into the uh, Emerson line uh, a year or two ago. And uh, you know, every knife has a personality and every knife has a following. It's, it's kind of funny. And now there's a following uh, people that just love this uh, Gypsy Jack. And uh, again, it's, it's a cool knife. It's got a big old blade, but it's, it, as you can see, it's kind of based off the, uh, the, the Spanish Navaja. And I'm, I hope I pronounced that correctly. You did. But uh, that, that has the lines of this knife, and I, I had to do something a little different, so we put that big old blade in there, and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Let me say this, I think this would be a wicked fighter, Ernest, because look at the accelerated cut you're gonna have here. You got reach oh, for absolutely. that blade, waveable, big old handle to hang on to, high traction G10. Yep. That, I think that'd be well, a nasty little fight knife. You know right what, there. again, it's, it's obvious you know what you're talking about, because here's one of the things that, happens. When you have a, ba a blade that's got a, a bigger belly out front, just like the Commander, uh, 
when you when you connect with something, this area from about here to here is going to cut real deep because you're not spreading the force out over the entire length of the blade. If I take a, very, a straight, straight knife and I hit something, that force is kind of spread out over this straight line, if you will. So it's not as deep a cut. You take something like this, and you can imagine, I'm just going to uh, just kind of show you, I'm not going to do it, but you can imagine if I took this blade and went like that, it would go right straight down to the bone, you know, because all of that force is, is right here on the on the uh, the edge of that curve. And again, that's that's a good point. That those blades with the big with the big belly, if you will, they are they're dangerous as hell. Nasty. If you look historically at fighting knives, if you will, yeah. in the different cultures Kukri. all over the world. Yeah, there there is convergent evolution that's taken place because those things are defined by use and by experience. The best fighting knives in the world still exist because if the guys who would come up with a bad fighting knife design, nobody's going to use it and they got killed. So right. I mean, really, in the days when you really survived uh, through the use of the simple tools and all that, whether it was out hunting or whatever, if it didn't work, it, it went into the heap and uh, the, the, the garbage pile of history. Only the good things have ever come through uh, evolutionary. So. Wicked. I actually love that knife, guys. Love it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's it's a little bit out there. I like it's knives that are out there sometimes, as long as they're serviceable, and we talked about that. Yeah? What's that one right there? Well, I'm a good old boy from northern Wisconsin, and I'm also a big history guy and all that, and I'm, I'm very, very interested in everything that has to do with the history of America and all the good stuff. And uh, you can't have the history of America without talking about Jim Bowie and the Bowie knife. And I know every little guy that's out there uh, knows the story of Davy Crockett and everybody else uh, that had anything to do with uh, Bowie knives and all that. And uh, it, I don't make a lot of fixed blade knives, so it's tough for me to say, hey, I'm making a Bowie knife. But I, I can certainly appreciate a Bowie style blade. So what this is, is this is the Emerson interpretation of a tactical Bowie style folding knife and uh, the Bowie style blade is really kind of an iconic symbol of the of American history and just uh, the same way that the uh, the Peacemaker Colt is and even the, the 19, Browning's 1911 uh, is an iconic design the Bowie knife has to go right in there the K-Bar knife has to go right in there and uh, so when when I was playing around I, I love this handle style because it's got a good good grip both forward and back. It locks in there, doesn't it? Sure does. Uh, I wanted to put a knife in there that had something to do with a Bowie knife. This is as close as I can get in a folding version. Love and so uh, CQC 18? 13. CQC 13. 13, yep. That's the Emerson folding Bowie style How popular knife. is that one, Ernest? It's actually very popular, and I'll tell you, it's, it's, it should be. It's a good knife, and, and again, one of the things that's important about us uh, and, and our knives is I remember the first time I picked up a Glock uh, pistol, and I'm a 1911 guy, but I'll tell you what, I picked up a Glock pistol and I thought, damn, this feels like the guy built it for my hand. And, I, and I'm not a big guy, I don't have big paws or anything, but that Glock just felt like it was mine. And from that point forward, I love Glocks. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, I believe, you know, when we're talking about designing and all that, the proof is when you pick that knife up in your hand. It either feels good to you or, or it doesn't. You can have a, a dynamite blade, you can have the most special blade steel in the universe, but if that knife doesn't feel good to you when you pick it up, that's not the knife for you. And uh, we've, we've been very, I guess, lucky, maybe successful in designing knives that, that have that good feel concept, the ergonomics, I guess, if you will, uh, in, in our knives. And uh, it, it's, to me, the highest compliment is uh, not just, hey, I like your knife, it, it stays sharp, it, it's, I used it, etc., etc. As a designer, the highest compliment is when a guy pick one, picks up one of my knives and said, damn, this feels like you made it just for me, because then I know I've nailed that design. So, again, that's why we have, you know, and everybody's different, that's why we have a, a kind of a variety of uh, handle styles. Well said, man, I'm enjoying this booth review. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is just amazing. Totally on. Well, this is another favorite of mine, sir. You know, I'll be honest with you, I really don't get a chance to talk about this stuff, and this, uh, is, this is a great opportunity. So. This is what people want to hear. Uh, let me tell you this, in the Nut and Fancy Project, there are thousands of Emerson fans. Totally. Thousands and thousands. There's oh, thousands proud. of people who went out and bought a CQC8 after the review in 2008. I've talked to them over 
over the years. They just absolutely love the quality. I hear from some of them deployed in Afghanistan, their soldiers using the blades. And some guys have some amazing stories of durability. I talk to them all the time. This some is for you guys, <laughs> talking to the man himself. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, uh, the Persian. Uh, this goes back a ways with me. Uh, when I was just a custom knife maker working in my garage, uh, I made some fixed blades for some guys that were, at that time, uh, there was a lot of action going on in Kosovo and Bosnia. And, uh, you know, surprisingly enough, uh, people like to say, hey, there's no knife fighting and the use of knives in hand-to-hand -hand combat doesn't exist anymore. Uh, unfortunately, at times it still does. The, the face of warfare uh, these days now is room to room. It's not even street to street. It's literally room to room. And uh, people will walk into a room and it, sometimes someone will charge out with a knife. Sometimes uh, they'll charge out with uh, whatever they have at, at hand and just start fighting with the, uh, with the soldier. And uh, back in Bosnia, I had some guys contact me. We were working with a, an international group, actually, let's say. And uh, they said, we want a knife that we can use for specific purposes. And you know, without going into a lot of detail, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But uh, we developed a knife, you know, and again, I'd like to say I did this, I did that, I did this, I didn't. This, almost everything we've ever done has been, <clears throat> excuse me, with feedback, with ideas with uh, direct input from the guys that are going to use the knives. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> I'd like to think that I'm a, well, I'd like to think I'm one of the best knife designers in the world, but I'll tell you where I really think I am the best is I'm the best listener in the world when it comes to designing product. Because again, I'd like to say it was all me, it ain't. It's, it's all the people that have been coming to me and, and, and maybe recognizing that I can put some of their ideas in, into place that turn into a knife. This is a perfect example. We made a fixed blade, it was called the Tactical Persian. They used it over there, and, and I gotta tell you one quick story. Please. This is about as far as I can go with it, but uh, there's a couple grave diggers over in Kosovo that ended up with a couple of those Tactical Persians because they got used and left where they were used, and the guys told me, they said, I don't know if I can swear or not, but yeah, uh, a little bit. they said, God damn it, I, some, <laughs> some grave digger in Kosovo has got, <laughs> got those tactical Persians right now. So oh, anyway, we'll gosh. leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, a good design is a good design. Like I said, uh, it was a fixed blade. We looked at it and said, hey, we could turn that into a folding knife. And uh, the reason I like it, it's got this nice, clean, upswept curve. And again, uh, it's a little pointy, and, and I'll be honest with you, this is not a great utility knife because that you can see that's a pretty delicate edge up there. But uh, again, it, it's a knife that has a it's very effective if it's ever used in a self-defense situation. It's a little big for me anyway. But uh, I love the curves. I've always liked uh, the Persian style blades. Uh, again, you know, you think about the Persian scimitars. There's a reason they exist. It's because they're very effective. And that that curve as it drags along. If it's cutting anything at all, it just keeps engaging sharp edge after sharp edge after sharp edge. Great and, penetration uh, capabilities oh, on that too. Well, Probably through body armor, soft body armor. No you problem know, it's with funny that. you bring that up because uh, we've had several people actually recently uh, buy this knife specifically. Uh, uh, I don't want to go there. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm that's gonna stop fine. With that. Well, I'll say it. Uh, yeah. Unless you have a knife vest on, one that's specifically designed against an edge weapon, this will defeat it. We'll just leave it at that. We'll How's just that? leave it at that. It's a nasty, nasty knife. I love the edge, the accelerated cut. That has a beautiful handle on it too. Yeah. Look at how it, the the radius on that fits your hand. Yeah, and it actually fits it in both directions. Yeah. 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 And uh, again, let me just say. Per your last comments, it's obvious you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you very because, much. Uh, I try. I could go into I'm details, always learning. but we'll leave it. And it's a privilege to meet you. Here's a oh, black, guy, black commander. We didn't show yeah. that one. Just real quick. On. Yeah, guys, actually, yeah. We, have a, we have a black coating, which is a, similar to a gun coat, and we have a stone wash finish, uh, depending on what, what the customer likes. We've had a lot of fun with all these knives. This right here. This stone wash. Awesome. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. It's actually quite pretty. I, it I, is. I love it. You know, but... Even tools can be pretty, I guess. That's 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 a cool thing, and I, I'm 
we're, we just have a lot of fun with, with well, what it, we do. To me, it, it combines when it's a, a work of art that is functional. That in it, uh, both on both levels. In a nut and fancy project, I call it two kinds of cool. First kind of cool is functionality and role. Second kind is that what you already talked about, and that is that it just connects with us. We put the knife in our hands and we go, "Oh man, this blade rocks." Uh, I know that's it same rocks. with me. It, it connects. It's, it's like slipping into a nice sports car, man. It just feels <laughs> with so it. good. How about choice of steels? You want to say anything about that? What your yeah. preferences are, what you like, what you don't like, what your experience has been? Damn, this is a good opportunity. Again, I'm telling you, there's so many things that I don't get a chance. I, Unless you're standing here in front of my booth and we're talking specifically to an individual about some of these things, I never get a chance to get it out it's my to the privilege. general public. It's my privilege. Uh, yes, choice of steel. Uh, First off, I'm going to say one thing. Uh, I'm very loyal. I'm very loyal to the people that were there for me when we started. Crucible Steel was there for me when we started. Uh, they came to us and said, uh, Ernie, if we build sheet steel in uh, 154 uh, formulation, will you use it? And I said, absolutely. I'm using ATS-34 at the time. I said, for God's sakes, it's a copy of your steel. Are you kidding? A US made steel? We're all about everything being made in the US. Damn right we'll use that steel. And uh, they were there for me. They've been very good to us over the years. So I'll be honest with you, are there other steels out there? Yeah, but I'll tell you what, I, I place a high premium on loyalty. And I'm telling you right now, uh, to me, that, that says a lot about them. Uh, so we use it. Uh, I love 154, for the right. record. I absolutely love it. It's been such a good performer for me personally. So I want you to know that, that I'm a big fan as a knife reviewer of that. Well, the thing about steels is, number one, uh, every year there's a new super steel. And next year there's another new super steel. Right. And there's a super steel the year after that. And we don't jump on the bandwagon and, you know, without sounding too arrogant or whatever, we don't sell our knives based on the, the newest steel or the newest handle material or the newest whatever. Uh, we sell our knives based on basically the design and the reputation and the fact that you, if you bought a knife from me 10 years ago and bought a knife today, you're getting pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's, it's like a Chevy 327 engine. You know, it's, it's there, it's been there, and it will be there. Uh, the reason that we like the, the 154 is, let's say that there is a steel that out there that uh, you can heat treat up to a high, high uh, rock well. Uh, we don't heat to a high rock well. We heat to a 57 to 59 rock well. So even if you came to me and said, hey, Ernie, you can take this to a 64 rock well, we wouldn't heat treat it to that hardness anyway. So there's no reason for me to search for those types of situations. And I'll tell you the reason why, now that we got the, the moment to do that. Loving it. It doesn't have to do with anything about edge holding because people talk about, well, this this will cut 1,000 pieces of rope and this one cut 800 pieces of rope and this one cut 100 pieces of rope. I guarantee you I will dull any knife. I have dulled any knife. I live on a ranch. We've got horses. Uh, it's a working farm. Uh, any knife I've ever had, I can dull in 15 minutes and five cuts, it'll dull. Yep. The point is, is this. I am not as concerned, and my customers, my original customers, were not as concerned about edge holding as they were about breakage. Because a dull knife is still a knife, a broken knife is no knife. And so people misunderstand when they say, oh, you use it so it's easy to sharpen. No, the reason is, it's because we don't want our knives breaking. That's why we back it down to a 57 to 59 Rockwell. It's very simple. The people that use knives understand that. Uh, people that are trying to sell knives that based on my features better than your feature, they're going to play all those cards and all those details and all this is a 68 Rockwell and yours is a 67. I don't play that game. So, you know, we're confident enough in what we do that uh, we'll stand next to anybody, anytime, any place, and put our knives up against it. And our customers know. You know what struck me about Emerson is your staying power. Staying power. I mean, you continue to sell knives in a very competitive cutlery market. I mean, there's some great blades out there. I talk about them all the time. And yet you continue to have customers in real world places. I'm talking LE, military, guys putting their lives on the line carrying these blades. And it doesn't go down, it increases. Well, you know what? We haven't advertised in over 10 years. And I don't, and I mean, we have part. not advertised. I know. And uh, so there's, there's got to be something going right. And uh, again, that's all word of mouth. I mean, 
really honest. Uh, it's our customers. We, we have the most loyal customers in the world. Uh, the thing about it is, I, I really don't even like to use the word customers because some of the best friends that I have and that I'll have forever have been guys that walked up to my booth and purchased a knife from me. And I don't view those guys as customers. I view the people that step up in front of me, they're, they're friends and they've become friends. And they've, they're friends that now come and stay at my house, they eat dinner with me, they go out and drink whiskey or beer or whatever. Break your knives. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I really, <laughs> they, they can be broken, they're not super. They're, they're not, not made of kryptonite. <laughs> and we've seen some real damage, I'll tell you what. But uh, again, our customers are our friends. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. And I'll be honest with you, and I, I'm, this may sound a little arrogant, but I know my customers better than any other knife company or any other owner of any knife company in the world, because I'll tell you what, I go to a knife show, and we go to a lot of them. I'm shaking hands with them. I'm there, I'm listening to them, I'm talking to them. They know me and I know them. And I'll tell you what, I, I'll, I'll say that to my dying day. I know my customers better than me. Somehow other. I believe that's true. Totally. Doodle. Totally. How about the wave feature? Was that your innovation? Damn, I wish I could say that I, <laughs> that I sat down and said, I'm going to design the wave feature. Uh, here's here's the true story of the wave. Because your knives were some of the first to wear it, that I became aware of at least. I'm sure there was they something, and I, and I don't know anything, but it was a CQCA that I first saw it and used it and loved it. Okay. The first knife to ever have the wave on it was the Commander. And the reason that it did was, uh, again, I was working with, and, and you know, I guess I'll take my moment to plug. Uh, we, we've had an incredibly strong relationship with the Navy SEAL team since, since I was a guy working in my garage almost 30 years ago. And there's a whole backstory to that. Uh, which told you. Which you can find uh, various places. Yep, it's out uh, there. But the reason that that wave exists is, is because I was working with a special unit inside the, the teams, and they said, Ernie, we want to we have a, a knife that has these certain features on it, and one of them is that we want to have some kind of a blade catch on top of the, of the knife in case it ever had to be a situation where it was engaged with somebody or something. They didn't want they didn't want the ability of something to slide up that blade because you hit something, boom, it slides up. They don't want it to slide up into the into the hand of the operator. And I said, well, let's put this little catch on top. It can't be too big because it'll be in the way of everything. So I put I put this little feature on top of the of the blade and it looked like a wave and I said, well, we, you know, people started calling it the wave. But what happened was uh, we had a, we had some guys from Coronado that called me and said, Ernie, come on up. Or they called me they called me and said, is the knife ready yet? And I said, come on up. I've got the prototypes uh, just developed. So it takes about 90 minutes for them to drive up to my house. So they booked on up. They got to the house. They looked at the knives and they said, hey, that's that's what we want. We'll take them back, do a little T&E on them. And uh, they left my shop. And about 90 minutes later, I'm sitting at my, in my shop, and I'll show you what was going on. Isn't this awesome? This is awesome. Actually, this is I've got awesome. a commander in my pocket. I was sitting at my shop, and I had my hand down here, and I, I went to pull, pull the knife out of my pocket, and as I pulled it out, I noticed it's, it's partially open. And I thought, wow, what, what's that all about? So I put it down in again, I pulled it out again, open it up a little more, and then I was like, hot dang, what if I went like this? And lo and behold, it, op it opened the blade up. And, and I kid you not, this, this happened. I will swear on a stack of Bibles. As I was doing that, my phone rang. And I'm standing there with a knife in my hand, I pick up the phone, again, pardon my French, we're talking Navy SEALs. <laughs> Ernie, what the fuck? <laughs> Son of a bitch! Do you know what this knife does? When you pull it out of your pocket, it fucking opens it. And I'm going, I just, yep, I just figured Navy that seals. out myself. <laughs> and then the next sentence was, and it opens beer bottles. <laughs> Definitely. Now I know seals. this, this story is true. <laughs> and so I would like to say that I was a genius and I figured out how to do that. It happened by accident. I'll take credit for actually uh, putting it together and, and, and uh, doing that. But again. What's the reason that it happened? 
is I was listening to the guys who were going to use the knife. I mean, really, that that to me is my greatest talent. Yeah. You know? You're obviously good. At so that. anyway, that's the story of the wave. We that's patented Ernest it. Personal. Yeah, that's my personal knife. We we own the wave. Uh, excuse me, not the wave. Uh, pocket opening feature, if you will. Actually, Leatherman owns the term wave when it comes to knives. We use a generic, uh, just called the wave feature. But uh, yeah, that's my personal knife. It's a commander. That's the knife I would expect you to have. And you can see we've blinged it up a little bit. What's your favorite in your line, Bernie? Well, this I is, this is called question. the Skull and Roses Commander. And, and again, you know, I'm all about tactical, but I thought, you know what? It's like a tattoo artist. <laughs> sits around and tattoos on himself. It's kind of like that with the knife. So we've been playing with some designs and some bling from one of my buddies, uh, Derek, Derek Obataki, if I can sure. plug. Go ahead. Uh, Steel Flame uh, builds uh, some beautiful rock and roll jewelry. And uh, that's his work on there. Beautiful. You know, another thing I love about your knives, and I could go on and on, uh, I love that that also becomes a thumb ramp. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yep. And, like, yep. and I think you've mentioned that. You've got some jimping top side. It locks that thumb in on there. Yep. I really like sharp jimping whenever I can get it. Yep. Lockup is solid. Yeah, it's, your lockups rock. Well, this knife is this is about three years old. And I, I'm telling you, I, I live on a farm, and I mean, I use it as hard as any other guy who lives on a farm. And uh, I've never had to do anything to the knife except uh, sharpen it. Uh, and it's it served me well. It's a little pretty, but uh, you know, people always ask me, uh, "What do you do?" People that don't know me, they'll, they'll say, "What do you do for a living?" And I say, "Well, I have a knife factory." And I used to pull out an old CQC7 that was all beat to hell, and they'd say, "Oh, okay, got it." You know, well, that was, that was impressive. And then I thought, you know what? The heck with it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bling one out. So when somebody asks me what I do, I pull out this knife, and the, the first thing that they say now is, "Let me take a look at that." So it's a good conversation starter too. So, are you doing special editions here and there of uh, of these knives here on the chair, and then maybe you'll come out with a special coloration occasionally, a special we will. something or other. Uh, I just wanted to show you. This is a user knife, and you can see it's, it's well used. It. Yeah, it's been hammered pretty heavy. So, uh, yes, we do. In fact, uh, we've got we've got quite a few uh, because we're not. We're not a giant sized knife company. We're, we're a medium sized knife company. Uh, I can leave my sh my office, walk right out onto the floor of the factory and say, hey guys, you know what? I want to build some knives uh, with green handles or brown handles, or I've got a brand new design that I want to bring out. Let's, I've got the drawing. I'll give it to my engineer, turn that into a CAD file. I want to, I want to start building these knives this afternoon. And I'm not kidding, we've done that. And it, it can happen that fast because we have a real tight control of what we do. We don't build tens of thousands of, of a model at one time. We build small numbers. So yeah, our, one of our specialties and one of the things that I guess uh, makes us uh, more user friendly to the different groups and all that is that you could come in and say, hey, we want to do this with a knife. We've got a special feature we want to put on it. And we can literally turn that around and get prototypes done that same day or the next day. And if, if a guy wants to order 50 knives or 500 knives, it makes no difference to us. We'll build them for him. So. Yes, that's a hundred percent USA produced blade right there, guys. Oh yeah, right down to the screws. You want a USA produced knife? You want a manufacturer who knows what the heck he's doing and loves it and loves it. And there's so many elements in what he's been saying that I've just been behind the camera, just inside, just going, preach it, preach it. One is your passion that you are passionate about what you're talking about, and and what you see in Emerson knives, it is a direct. Uh, interpretation of your personal philosophy and you don't waver from that you're not influenced by anything other than what's in your heart and you go this is what I believe this is what I I know works for the guys out there going into harm's way these are blades that are going in and probably have killed a few bad guys in their day I'm just saying probably and I love it I can only respect you for that Thank because it is just awesome now this I gotta be honest. Let me let me interject. Go ahead. Thing. Go ahead. It ain't just me. My wife Mary runs the business. We met her. She's a sweetheart. My daughter Megan works there. My daughter Rachel works there. My wife's mother works there. So we're a family, family owned and run business also. So and I, I, that's important too. And, and I'll tell you, uh, small businesses is the lifeblood of this country. Without them, there would be no United States of America. Yep. So again, when it comes to us. 
being USA made. We're supporting other companies that build the G10, that build the steel, that make the screws for us, uh, that, that built the titanium, and, and I'm proud of that too because, uh, you know, without that, I wouldn't be making knives. Sometimes I talk about price. I don't really care what the price is. It's worth it with an Emerson knife. I mean, I'm going to go out and search for the best price I can from the people Absolutely. who sell your blades. Yep. I want a good deal for that knife. But hearing the story of Emerson, knowing the quality levels, some things that are worth, that are just worth the money. Because they're knives you bond with. It does. It's functional. It's a lifetime blades. You know, you combine the art, you talk about how it feels in hand, and that's really what I look for. There's so many cool knife designs that I just, I don't feel attached to. I and I, I actually that had that show. CQC8 for a long time, and I, I carried that just because I loved it. There was something He took it from me, dude. I did take I'm it like, from him. I'm like, where's the CQC8? And he's like, I love it. I carry it. I went off to school and I came he back and I was like, it. where's that CQC? <laughs> we need to get some more Today, of these. He still has it. We need to review some more of these. Well, you you're watch the, the right comments place. of this video, man. Thank you guys. Appreciate you did an it. awesome job. Ernie, anything else oh. that you, we didn't talk about you'd, you'd like to tell the world? Well, if, if we could for a moment, Mary, Megan, could you come over for just a sec? Sure. Just want to introduce my youngest daughter is in school right now and couldn't make it to the shot show. Where's this mom? is Megan right here on the right. Hi. This is my daughter. daughter, Megan. She runs the all the sales and everything. Is mom around? No, she, she ran off. Mom ran off. She did the lunch run probably. Well, she wheeled off in her wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a broken foot oh, right now. So, lo right. and behold, before the, the shot show where you got to walk miles and miles of aisles, my wife broke her foot about two weeks ago. She's recovering and all that, but she's on crutches in a wheelchair right now. So Awesome. She'd be here if she could. Well played, sir. Thank you for Well played. This is a Nut and Fancy project. Having a privilege and honor to talk to Ernie Emerson, the story behind the knives, the story behind the steel. It is a very impressive philosophy. Awesome. Well played. This is going to be a gold star review thanks to Ernie. Nothing fancy signing off. Thanks, guys.